Hello, my YouTube subscribers and fans. Well, yes, you see in front of you the uh, second game that I decided to put on this table. Now, I did show you the, uh, the chessboard, which I painted on the table. So, I was wondering, let me just put this microphone close to me here. I was wondering, what should I do for the next chess, I mean the next game board? I was thinking, well, I'm going to make two chess boards, you know. I got enough chess sets to start my own uh, uh, chess club, you know. But I thought about it and I thought about it. I said, you know, I've got enough chess, vinyl boards and chess boards to, uh, to just throw on the table if I really wanted to play chess next to, you know, to, you know, if I had enough people here to play, you know, more than one person chess. But I thought about it, and there's these other games, of course. You know, uh, mankind has been using games to teach children uh, for, for thousands of years. Uh, board games like, like chess, you know, uh, it might be as, as old as a thousand years old. But older games. This one is Nine Men's Mars, otherwise known as Mills. Now, there's actually... Um, um, I went to Walmart to see if they would, they would still sell this game, and they actually do sell this game. Uh, it's a part of a combination game box. So Nine, Mil Nine Men's Mars, otherwise known as Mills, uh, generally speaking, can be played with not uh, well. It's 18, 18 different discs, uh, nine of each. It's Nine Men's Mars, right? But um, of course, you can use anything. Um, I've got uh, two different color army men. I've got the uh, the traditional black and white discs, which I uh, um, acquired from an old backgammon game. Um, they're the stones that you can get at any dollar store of various different sizes and, and colors. Um, I kind of like these too, actually. You know, but um, let me just bring them a little close. I don't know if you could actually see them. The camera's over there, but the point is, is um, I was going to make a, a two chess boards, one right next to each other, two different colors, but not every kid. This is really for kids, after all. Not a, not every kid is interested in chess. Now, of course, I've, I've been saying for a long time, and it still holds true, that chess is one of those exercise machines for the brain, and uh, um, I myself use it because I'm getting older and, and I've actually improved on my memory and stuff just by keep on playing chess. But what do you do when you have some kids, maybe in your family or, or, or what have you, that uh, you would love to teach them how to play chess, but they're just simply not interested, or their attention uh, uh, span is not, you know, up to up to the point where, where they can actually learn the game very well or anyway, or they're just not interested in some way or another. But you still want to introduce them to board games because, you know, with this pandemic and everything, you know, a lot of, you know, everybody's inside. Um, and I thought, well, how about like an older, much more simple game? Nine Men's Morris came to the, came to my head. Now on this uh, chessboard, I uh, used paint. I went the lazy and cheap way out on on this side. I used a non-toxic um, permanent marker from Pen and Gear, um, and of course, when it gets warm enough to open windows. Uh, this is a, a water-based uh, uh, um, acrylic, poly polyacrylic protective finish that I intend to put on this table. Um, but they say that there's still some fumes, so I don't. I don't want to do this. I'm looking at the TV. I'm supposed to be looking at the camera. Um, I don't want to take any chances. I want to have some windows open when I actually brush this table. Now, as you know. Uh, or at least, as some of you may know, this table is, is a piece of plywood, a very thick piece of plywood. It's a uh, three-quarter inch thick plywood on top of a folding table that I'm using as a dining room table, which I 
quickly uh, decided to put a chessboard on. And um, one of these days, not too far off in the future, say sometime in the near future, I'm going to make this into an actual table because as it is now, you know, it's a folding table and it's a bit shaky, you know, and it's getting shakier by, by the day. This, this is a heavy piece of plywood and we've eaten dinner on this a thousand times, well, not, not a thousand times, but uh, since uh, say two Thanksgivings ago, uh, uh, we've been using this table. We, I say we, I say I, I say we because I have uh, one friend, one brother, uh, uh, two friends and one brother, and one of the friends I babysit for the kid. So this uh, Nine Man's Morris actually came into mind because of this kid. So this is the way the game is played. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the rules quickly and uh, we're gonna show you how it's actually done. So each player gets nine single color discs, okay? It, it, do, it doesn't matter who goes first, black or white, or you flip forward or choose or just like you do in chess or however you wanna do it. The thing about Nine Men's Mars is that it's basically a complicated tic-tac-toe because if, 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 um, if in a perfect game in chess, for example, white has the advantage because white goes first, and the, but the best, in a perfect game, you get a draw. In um, um, Nine Men's Mars, in a perfect game, the one who went first wins. But, of course, it's a little more complicated than that. So, um, you know, if you had two super grand masting computers, <laughs> grand masting <laughs> computers playing Nine Men's Mars, generally speaking, the the the, uh, uh, the one who went first, the, the the program that went first, would win. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. So each player takes their nine discs, and one by one, take a turn putting the discs down. Now the idea is to get three in a row. Let me put the white ones so that you can see it better. So you get three in a row, you call that a mill. And that's three connecting lines, not, not the diagonal. Although there is one version that does connect the diagonals. I decided against that. Um, so, so uh, for example, if, um, if black had two down and white just went and, and put the third one down in a row, black, um, white takes one of black's pieces and puts it aside. I like to put it in the middle or put it in the side or what have you, okay? Um, that can happen during the place down of the pieces, but it doesn't always happen that way. And once, um, once all the pieces are down, then you start sliding them along the lines, okay? Uh, for example, uh, if I, you know, you could go that way, you can go this way, you can go up and down. Otherwise, it's always to, towards the lines. Now, one of the tricks in, in that, in doing that, for example, would be, let's, for example, have, have like that. One of the ways of, of winning positions is that you have three this way, and then it's your turn, you slide one, and you get three that way, and you take another piece, and then it's your turn again, you take back and forth with the same with the same thing. So uh, one of the extra rules is that you can disallow that. You can disallow the back and forth movement. Um, I don't generally play that way. Another um, rule is that if you're down to three, you can fly. In other words, instead of just sliding it to one dot or the next, you can go anywhere you want when you get down to three stones or three discs, okay? So let's go ahead and, and uh, pretend that we're actually playing. Another way to win, by the way, oh, so, so the way to win, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, but the way to win is when the one player gets down to two discs, okay? So you lost the game if you get down to two discs, all right? Um, you can't capture uh, an opponent's, opponent's disc on let, um, um, when it's three in a row or a mill uh, unless that's the only three he has left. Then you can. Another way to uh, win is if you block your opponent from being able to move. You know, like I said, you, when you're playing the game, you slide in pieces back and forth. But if you have enough pieces, 
uh, sliding pieces back and forth. Excuse my stuttering. When you, when you have enough pieces, you can literally block an opponent from being able to move. For example, um, just to show you on one disc. So, you know, this disc cannot move. So it's my turn. I can't move. Okay. Of course, I would have two other discs, discs somewhere. Otherwise, I would have lost the game. But that's, if you can do that with all your opponent's pieces, for example, um, I can show you how I can do that. Okay, now I have two discs that can't move, right? Let's see. Okay. Now I have three discs that can't, that can't move. So if, if, if my opponent, say, slid up to here, and it's my turn, I can't move. I lost. All right? Can you, I hope you can see that. I'm hoping that the camera's picking this up. I, on the TV is way over there. That's why I'm looking at the TV, by the way. I'm looking at to see if I can see myself making the moves. So that's the two ways to win the game. And the extra rules. And now I'm going to give a little demonstration on how. So, it's say say decide if black goes first. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go here, and it's white's turn, and it's black's turn. I'm going to black and go here, and now I see that black has two in a row, and it's my turn to put a disc down. I'm going to have to stop that. Okay, so black's turn again. And now I see another time where black can get another three, and now I've got three, or go, or, or hoping for three, and, and black, uh, it's black's turn, he's gonna block me. You see how this goes back and forth? Uh, there's a trick sometimes into getting uh, a corner and two outer pieces where you can have uh, two ways of getting three in a row, uh, tricking the opponent into not being able to uh, stop you from getting the three. So let me see if I can pull that off. Um, for example, if I were to put one on the corner and it's Black's turn. Let me see, make sure I, I got the right number of pieces here. I got the four. No, I, I must have went out of turn here. Okay, well, let's, let's do another white piece. Um, no, let's not. Let's not do another white piece. Let me see. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's let's do it this way. Let me see if I can demonstrate this this trick. Okay, so if I had a piece here, and a piece here. Yeah, piece here, piece there and say a piece here okay and it's black's turn you see what's going on here is, is that i've got the corner and i can put one here and get three or i can put one here and get three and black can't do anything to block one or the other he can only block one so say he blocks that one then i just put one here and I decide to uh, take one of Black's pieces and say I take, I don't know, say this one so that I can try and get a... It's okay, so I'm, I'm capturing that piece now so it goes outside the board. And now it's Black's turn and he decides to put one back there and so on until all the pieces are down. So we're just going to put these pieces quickly down. Uh, black, say, goes here and he tries to get three. I go here and Black goes here, tries to get three and I go here. Okay, so I, I forget who went first, but uh, let's give Black the let's give Black the, the chance to go first since I already got one of his pieces. All right, so Black is going to try to slide his pieces into getting three. Now, for example, Black has a piece here, and he has a piece here, and he has a piece here. So he might want to try to slide this one and this one down to get the three in a row. Okay. Um, so one way to start is to block me from sliding up 
and then sliding back down again. So he might want to slide this one down. Okay, so it's my turn. I don't know, let me think. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this one down so I can try and get three across here. Now he slides this one over here. Okay, he's gonna try and get that one there. And actually he's gonna succeed. You see, because I have no way of stopping that. So I'm going to continue and try and get my three. And I'm going to slide this one here. But I'm too late. He slides this one down, gets the mill, as they call it, or um, a three in a row. And he takes one of my pieces before I can get my three in a row. So say he takes, I don't know, this one. Now he's got one piece and I've got one piece. Now it's my turn. I need to stop him somehow and I don't think I can. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to slide this one up. Also, potentially getting a three on a roll of my own if I slide this one up. So now he probably sees that, and he's going to probably slide this one down to block me. Okay, I'm going to try to get these three then. I'm going to go slide that one there. And he's going to say, okay, well, I'm going to try and get my three and slide that one up. And I'm going to say, well, you can do that, but you're too late. Because I'd go there, and uh, I'll just simply take one of those three. Okay. Now, as you, as you can say, as you noticed before, um, I told you before, you can't take one of the ones that are in a mill, that is, there are three in a row, um, unless there's only those three left, okay? So, but in any case, I can take any of these pieces, because he has none of them that are three in a row, and I didn't even notice that he had this one, he could have gotten three in. Totally, I totally missed that one, but you get the idea. Now, now, if if um, if he didn't do that, and I didn't do that, if he did this instead, that's three in a row. He could take one of my pieces. Now, let's say he took the wrong piece. He should have taken one of these, and he takes this one. Okay. Then I say, okay, fine. Don't take me. I'll go there, and I'm going to take one of yours. I cannot take one of these three pieces. I could take that one, that one, and that's it, because he's got three there as well. So I could only take one of these two pieces. Um, I'm gonna choose this one. See how that works? <clears throat> now, he's gonna try and do it again. I'm gonna block. He's gonna try and, um, I don't know, do it again. I can't block this one, so I'm not going to do this because then he'll just put it back and take that piece. So, all right, fine. But he missed something. I got that. See. So, in other words, it goes on like this. Okay. So that that's that's about as um, uh, uh, boring and um, lengthy explanation of how to play this game as I can give you. Uh, it goes on like that until one person uh, ends up with only two. Now, I just want to say one more thing. When one person gets down to three, let's just uh, take some of these random pieces off until we're down to three here. Okay, one, two, that's four. Okay, let's take this one. Okay, I'm down to three. And my opponent is, let's just say he's got more than me. We'll give him, uh, let's say he has four. All right, one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, if it's my turn, uh, because I'm only down to three, one of the optional rules is the flying pieces. I like the rule. I usually play with, you know, I, I play on the computer just to remember how to play the game so I can teach the kid. Um, 
I can pick up any piece and put it anywhere on the board, including right there. And now I could take one of his pieces. Okay. Now he's down a three. And he could do the same thing. And because I have no other pieces on the... Oh. Oh, no. I'm sorry. He's not down a three. Okay. Well, he's down a three now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me. Anyway, he, if, if he was down a three... He can do any, he can do the same thing, and because I'm down to three pieces, he can now take one of those three because there's no other pieces on the board left for me. Okay. Um, same same goes for even if he had four pieces on the board and he was here, for example, he can slide this piece in there and he would be able to take one of those pieces because that's the only three I got left and that makes me lose the game. Okay, so that's how it's played. This is Nine Men's Mars, otherwise known as Mill. Um, and because this kid that I uh, babysit for sometimes likes to play with army men, and I have a variety of pieces to play. Um, first, let me show you the, uh, the, the, the different color, large stones, and how they look, see? I don't know if that looks good on camera or not. Okay, um, you know, you know the, the the clear one is kind of it's hard to see on camera, I suppose. But um, let's just uh, let's just walk up to the camera. I mean, let's walk up to the television and see uh, how that looks. Because this kid likes to play with army men sometimes, you know, I'm talking the dollar store. They come with 35 army men, two different colors. Okay, let's put these back. I have, like I said, I have a variety of things. You can use anything you want, anything that you have laying around, pieces from old games. You could even use chess pieces. Um, but because he likes to play with army men, this game looks pretty cool with army men on it. So let's see. Let's just put two out of time on. Let's just see what it looks like. three in a row or anything like that. Yeah, there. Right, do I got nine there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I, I think that looks really cool with the uh, Especially for a nine-year-old kid, I think that looks pretty good for for a game having army men as as the the, the men. Nice nine men's Mars, right? So you have army men for your men. I think it looks pretty good. Um, I've even got bigger army men stashed away somewhere that I was actually using for a risk game. So uh, again, you could use literally anything you want. Um, I like the idea of army men. Um, you can use uh, various different toy figures or whatever. You can use, uh, um, you know, you want to get sophisticated. You could use the the uh, die cast uh, figures um, that they sell in the, in the uh, basic hobby shops and stuff like that or game stores. Um, just make sure they're two different colors so you can recognize which one is which. Things like that. So there it is. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe. And perhaps my next video will be uh, something on chess. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll show you the, what the new chess set looks like on the board. Um, maybe even sometime soon, maybe I'll even do this job. But I really want to wait for it to get a little warmer out so that I could open some windows. So 
let me just pick up the microphone. And I know I keep looking at the TV instead of the camera. I apologize for that. I, it's my habit of trying to see what I'm doing on the TV. So, you know, and the TV is like way over there and it's hard for me to see it. But uh, uh, I have now long enough wires to bring the camera and the microphone right up to me. Uh, I bought new extension cables, USB extension, extension cables, which I can now take the uh, camera and the microphone halfway across the house. But in any case, <clears throat> I'm going to walk away from the camera and I'm going to shut off or stop the recording. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and now let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you think that I should have put a Go game on the other side of this instead of the Nine Men's Mars, let me know. I might actually um, fill in the center of that with some writing, maybe maybe just name the game Nine Men's Mars or Mills or something, just to make it look fancy. But uh, again, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.